ready? Mm-hmm. Good morning, good morning. You're using this one? Or this one? Okay. May God be the glory. Welcome to the Powerhouse Church of God. First Sunday of 2021. Get used to 2021. <laughs> Amen. We moved on from 2020, and we give thanks for 2020 and all that God did for us. He kept us through all the challenges of 2020. And so let us start by giving him praise and thanksgiving. We're going to allow the, the praise team, the worship team, to lead us into worship for this morning. Good morning to everybody. Let me hear that you hear. Amen, 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 amen. To God be the glory. Go ahead, let's go ahead and give him praise and honor and glory this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen. And can we open up with a few bars of just Jesus paid it all. Je Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Just a few bars. Just a few bars. It, 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 it go right here. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, just a few bars.
can sing it, but I just want to share this one moment. It says, God, it says, do what you're famous for. Do what you're famous for. What's God famous for? Making a way. What's God famous for? Opening doors. God, God's famous for keeping his word. But most important, that's what he's faithful. He's, he's, he's famous for keeping his word. If he said he's going to bless you, he's going to bless you. If he said he's going to curse you, he's going to curse you. If he said he's going to bring you out, he's going to do it. If he says it, it's going to happen. That, that's what he's famous for. If you think about that word, famous, you're famous. Many people are famous for things. You know, if you think about, uh, for example, Lee's Hamburgers is famous. Why? For their hamburgers. Lee's Hamburgers, they have it on the name. Lee's Hamburgers, they were famous for that. Why? So every time you go to Lee's Hamburgers, you know you're going to get a good burger because they've been doing it for years. They've become famous. Now guess what? We serve a God who's been doing what he does for years. As a matter of fact, he's not even in time. He's in eternity. So he's been since the beginning of time. He's been doing what he's been doing. And so that right there today, I want to encourage us right now that whatever you're going through, it may seem bleak and dark. It may seem impossible. But we serve a God that's famous for, for moving in those impossible moments. Moses looking at the Red Sea. Pharaoh behind him. The Israelites complaining around him. And the Red Sea in front of him. But God said, God was speaking to him, hold up your stand. impossible in our eyes. But with God, all things are possible. Let's declare this one thing before we go. Hey, let's say that the last line. Say, I know. I, I know. Breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop. If you don't mind, lay your hands on yourself and declare those words. Hey,
how he brought you out and set you free. Yeah. How he brought you out and set you free. How he made a way out of the way. You ought to tell somebody about God's goodness. You ought to tell somebody about the way that he made. You ought to tell somebody how he's kept your mind in perfect peace. In the midst of storm, in the midst of adversity, only God can do that. Yes. Only God can keep your mind. Holly, thank you, God, for keeping my mind. Keeping my mind. Yes. Oh, keeping my mind. Oh, keeping my mind. When the world's gone crazy, thank you for keeping my mind. Giving me a song in midnight. Amen. Has anybody ever been there? Has God ever given you a song in midnight? In your midnight hour? In the midnight hour when it seems like everything's going wrong? Peace.
We are prepared and we have taken off in the new year. I've taken some liberty, Sister Gail. Please make sure your attitude and blessings are secured and locked in the upright position. All self-destructive devices and behaviors should be turned off now. All negativity, hurt, and discouragement should be put away. <laughs> should we lose altitude under pressure during this flight, reach up and pull down a prayer. Prayers will automatically activate your faith. Yes. And once your faith is activated, you can assist other people. <laughs> Don't try to help anybody else until your faith is activated. Uh, there is no baggage allowed on this flight. <laughs> no baggage. <laughs> I'm the pilot, but the captain, God, has cleared us for takeoff. Our destination is greatness in the kingdom of God. Give God a hand to pray. To God be the glory. Father, thank you. We've come this far by faith leaning on the Lord trusting in his holy word and he's never failed you've never failed us yet and we thank you and we thank you again and we give you thanks in all things. We give you thanks in what 2020 brought us through. And we're still here, which means there's work yet to be done. So we give ourselves over to your divine purpose, guidance, help, strength, presence. There are souls yet to be saved. Hearts and lives yet to be ministered to. Fill us afresh today. Equip us afresh today. That your will may be done and your name glorified. In this greater New Orleans region, in our neighborhoods, in our families, in our workplace, in our schools, in our marriages, in our families, in our parenting. And all that pertains to us be glorified. We surrender to you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Sister Simon's going to come with a few announcements. Then we will finish up our obligations for today. Give God a hand of praise and to the praise. There's new leadership. The Lord has seen fit to uh, give us new leadership in the Church of God, serving MRC as well as Pollock. The new state coordinator and president will be uh, Reverend Kara Kortzmeyer. The state uh, assistant coordinator or vice president, Sister Joy Riggins. The finance director, Sister Elaine Richardson. The recording secretary, Carolyn Myers. 
the service coordinator, Shazandra uh, Laird, the relationship coordinator, Annette Parker, and the spiritual formation connector, Sister Susie Ellis. So give the Lord a hand of praise for those in leadership. They need our prayers and our support. Amen? Amen. Also, thank you. The, uh, our powerhouse received a beautiful card from a dear friend and classmate who watches us every single Sunday um, from California. And she says, Pastors Victor, Barbara, and Brian, may the wonder of the season make your Christmas sparkle and shine. May God continue to bless your affirming, edifying, and inspiring ministry. And this is from a friend, Dee Dee out of California, Los Angeles area. And she sent a donation, a very generous donation. And we give God the glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. And my last announcement, uh, our statements, financial statements of giving will be issued on January 31st. So make sure you're here then and you will receive your uh, statement of giving for the entire year of 2020. Thank you and God bless. Amen, amen, amen. Brother Wayne, give me a little music behind me. I'm not going to sing, but I, I, I'm a... Sister Darlene, I may sing just because you're laughing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Amen. Sister Jackson, that's all I'm going to do. <laughs> Sister Jackson's clapping because I said that's all I'm going to do. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. This is January 3rd, 2021. We're going to take our first communion in 2021 when I'm done. It's good to see all of you. Amen. It's good to see you this year. It means there's still work to be done. And I want to encourage you to pray with me that the Lord will open our eyes to see. Not only see, but move our hearts to do what he has purposed for us to do this year. As I stand here, I want to also uh, mention a prayer need that's in our state as well. Sister Simon mentioned some announcements. But I want to make you aware of, if you didn't already, Pastor Steve Nelson, or our state coordinator, Steve Nelson and his wife, Glenda, are both suffering through COVID-19, so keep them in prayer. Uh, and so their whole family is on lockdown. And that's them with their sons and their wives and their grandchildren. So keep them in your prayers. We'll add them to our list. Um, and, and God is so faithful to hear. The Lord gave me an interesting focus and title for this first message of 2021. We don't have a whole lot of time. We want to do a few things before we're done for this morning. And the title is Was. W-A-S. Was. I was reading through scripture and as often it occurs when I'm studying scriptures, all of a sudden something leaps in my spirit. And God reminds me. I don't know about you, but I often have to be reminded, Sister Darlene, because in our human nature we have a tendency to forget. We can all say that God has been good. 
because he is good. Amen. Amen. We've got a whole list of blessings that we can uh, enumerate, list, and say how good God has been down through the years. But some way, somehow, life gets so busy and, and complicated and trouble comes and difficulties come and problems come and upsets come and all of a sudden we somehow, some way in our human nature we forget how good and faithful God is. But this is how good and faithful He is. He helps to remind us. <laughs> Brother Vernon, God knows how to remind us. Amen. He knows how to bring to our remembrance. Amen. He, he tells us often, don't forget what I've done. Don't forget who I am. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so I want to speak for just a few moments about was. Because that's a big word for us as believers. I say it's a big word because even though we've, we've got scripture to tell us. Paul tells the Philippians, forget those things that are behind. Hallelujah. And press towards the mark, the high call of God that's in Christ Jesus. He tells us to forget what's behind us. But I appreciate that Paul's not telling us to just forget stuff. He's telling us don't go after what's behind us. Amen. He's not telling us to, to don't remember what God has done. He's telling us don't chase after the past. Hallelujah. You forget the stuff behind you. Don't, don't chase after stuff that you once had. But he says, press towards the mark of high call of God that's in Christ Jesus. Scripture text for today is coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to shorten the message a little bit, but I want to give you some foundational scriptures. I want to just remind us of what God has done. And because he has done some things, we can do. He has done something. Our lives can mean something and do something and achieve something to the glory of God. I want to go to you to the, the book of beginnings. Genesis chapter 1. There are two verses that I, 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 I believe God wants us to remember what he said. He gave Moses a uh, 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 the direction to, to write these. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. They're familiar scriptures, but I pray that you'll hear them. I'm reading in the New Living Translation, but listen to what the scripture says. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. Verse 27, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them don't forget that we've been created in God's image. And as I read that and reread it, this is what I'm reminded. If you're in the image of God, in the image of God, God said you are like me and no other creature on the earth is like you as you are like God. Know that you're like God, and, and God is able to be slandered and offended. We're created in the image of God, and so just like we can be offended, guess who else can be offended? 
God can be offended. Just like we're in the image of God, we can be betrayed. Guess who else can be betrayed? And I want you to know that because God can be offended and betrayed like us, how do you feel when you're offended? And how do you feel when you've been betrayed? Think about it because we've been created in His image. How do you feel when you've been forsaken or abandoned or left out? We were created in God's image so we have emotions and feelings and thoughts that even though sin came into the world by man, we still have the image of God shaping how we respond to life. <laughs> God, we can be abused and misused. And that doesn't feel good, does it? Just want you to think about God who created us in His image. The same stuff we feel when life goes crossways. And people don't meet up to our expectations and we feel bad. Guess how God feels when those He created in His own image disappoint Him. And so I wanted to emphasize that so that we can know that God can feel. Our actions. And how we live. Because we were created for him. And by him. In fact, Paul says that in the scriptures we were created by him and for him. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16, we were created for him, I mean by him and for him. He was cre we were created to bring pleasure to God. And so when we do things that go contrary to his design and purpose, he's offended. He's disappointed, he's betrayed, he's forsaken. We abuse and misuse God. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, glory to God. I, 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 the scripture of the Spirit of God says, set up the message by letting us know the heart and the mind of God towards us. He wants us to be like him because he created us in his image. I say that because he wants us to be like him so much that even though Adam and Eve failed, God did something even before they failed. How many of you know the scripture says the lamb was slain before the foundation of the earth? When you study that scripture, it says that God hasn't had an answer for our failure before we even came on the scene. The, the, the word was is right there in that scripture. The lamb was, was slain before the foundation of the earth. That, 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 that Revelation 13 and 8 says that. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the life of the Lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. There was something that was done for our benefit before we even came on the scene. Hallelujah. Mm. Revelations 1 and 8 says this for us. This is God speaking through John the Revelator. In Revelation 1.8 he says, write this down. <laughs> Say this about who I am. He says, I am Alpha, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. He said, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty. God's got it all covered. He's got your past, your now, 
and your future already covered and is covered by what he has already done. What always has been. What was. Amen. <laughs> Let me say this. What was affects what I be. <laughs> Amen. What was affects what I be. Amen. Because of what God has done, what was done by the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth affects who I am today. Hallelujah. Revelation 5.12 says in another way, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Amen. If you don't take another thing uh, anything else that I say today on this first Sunday in 2021 is that Jesus was slain for my benefit. Amen? Amen. You can do what God has purposed you to do because he was slain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let, let, let me read something. I'm going to come back and try to finish up. I was listening to some messages. Oh, glory to God. I guess I didn't write the note down. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. I remember what I wrote down. It was from Leonard Raven Ravenhill. <laughs> he said this, and this is for every believer. It's not that it's impossible for us because of our salvation. It's not that it's impossible for us to sin. It's not that it's impossible for us not to sin. Let me say that so you can hear. It's not that it's impossible, new believer, the child of God, that it's impossible for your sin. The good news that it's in, it is possible for you not to sin. Let me say it again. It's not impossible for you to sin, but it, the good news, it's possible for you not to sin. Amen. That's, that's the grace of God working in our lives. And that's the good news that we must carry to everyone. Don't act like you've never sinned. Amen. Saints of God, children of God, man of God, woman of God, stop acting like you've never sinned in your life. But let people know that I have no desire to sin because my life has been changed. Amen. That's what Jesus comes to do so that we can be returned to the likeness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that you know that God has given us the ability to choose. We can choose to love and we can choose to hate. But God has given us the ability to choose to love and, and the power to choose to love. Y'all just bear with me. I got my notes here and I, I decided I would staple them together so that it won't fly all off the place. But now I've got to turn them deliberately. Everything we need for life and living has already been provided. It was provided. Several Sundays ago when, well, I, I think I was standing here and preaching but it doesn't matter. The, the title was, It is Finished. How I many of you remember, we, 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 we revisited the cross where Jesus said, It is finished. When Jesus finished it, that settled it for us all. The key for living the life that God has purposed for us and intends for us to make a difference in the world, even in 2020 going forward, has already been provided 
The source of joy in living today has already been provided. Your best life is here today. It is now because it's already been provided. Everything that we need to live, you don't have to get it. It's already been provided. Uh, let me say that differently because it didn't sound the way I wanted it to sound that I think God intended for it to sound. You don't have to go and get what God has already provided. Amen. You don't have to get straight, fix things up because everything that you need has already been provided. It was provided in someone who declared that it was already done. Now let me finish by reading the scripture text that points this out. 2 Corinthians 5.4. I'm going to read a few scriptures and then we're going to do our, our celebration of communion and second harvest and all of the other things that we purpose to do today. But let's look to the scripture. 2 Corinthians 5.4. Paul writing the second letter to the church at Corinth. Five four. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. How many of you can say honestly you're ready to see Jesus? Well, let, let me make sure I'm hearing you clear. How many you say you're, you're ready to die today? Uh, I, I, I like that answer. If the Lord took you today, you're ready. Amen. That's a good answer. I trust that that's the reason you answered and that nobody's suicidal. <laughs> to God be the glory. We need to live ready. Hallelujah. We want these dying bodies, these aging bodies to be swallowed up in life. And verse 5 says, God himself has prepared us for this. And as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. If you're on last night for Sunday school, you know that the Holy Spirit is the empowerment of God. So that anointing to do our calling and what God has purposed in our lives is upon us. The only way we're going to be successful and fruitful in living this life until Jesus returns is through the power and presence of Holy Spirit. Amen. To make a difference in 2021, we must, I must, powerhouse must be filled and moved by the Holy Spirit. For without the Holy Spirit, we can't do anything that honors and pleases God. Second Corinthians 5.14, we're going to strip down, strip down a few verses. Either way, Christ's love controls us. How many would be Honest enough to say whether 100% totally and completely the love of God controls my life. All right, well, well glory, glory. All right, let me, let, me put, let me put a little pressure on you. Just because you tuned your, your horn, God's going to check it out. Amen. Love should motivate and drive your life going forward. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped eating. Let me read verse 16. This, this, this verse is for today. This, day, this is for January 3rd, 2021. Verse 15 says, verse 16, so we have stopped. If, if Paul is writing in the letter to the church, he's saying we have stopped. 
This is something that hopefully that's the case is that I stopped doing something that I used to do that I was doing. But he, he's saying that hopefully we embrace this intention is that we've stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. I'm going to say this as a pastor who watches and listening. And you hear me often say, and you may have paid attention to me, but I listen to what people say and I listen to what they don't say. If you ever watch me, I'm more of a listener. Even though I'm preaching right now, I'm more of a listener than I am a speaker. Because it tells you a lot by what people say and what they don't say. And here Paul is saying, so we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. Stop evaluating people by what you think they mean. Or, or what you think they ought to say. Uh, let, me, let me get a little bit down deeper. Stop evaluating people based on how they make you feel. That's what he's saying. Stop evaluating others from a human point of view. How many of you know that someone who is lost is going to do lost people stuff? How many of you know a liar is going to lie? A cheater is going to cheat? Someone in darkness is only going to show you what darkness comes out of their life. Don't be surprised when a sinner sins. So we are challenged and encouraged. Stop evaluating people from a human perspective. See them as God sees them. Uh, let, let, me, let me go a little bit harder. See them as God saw you before you got saved. We were created in his image, so the stuff that breaks God's heart ought to break our heart. Oh, glory. Let me see if I can finish up. Stop, stop evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now, says Paul. And then verse 17 says... This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And you know this from the King James Version. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are be passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's a dynamic that ought to be active in our lives today. If you're in Christ, it ought to show up. Amen, amen, amen. It, it ought to show up. Verse 18 says, And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ, and God has given to us the task of reconciling people to him. That's our mission, people of God powerhouse church of God family our assignment even though we're powerhouse church of God our assignment is all wrapped up in getting people right with God and how you ought to be motivated by what God sees and what God hears stop evaluating people from your hurt point of view <laughs> I say that because we've all been wounded Amen. We've been offended. <laughs> Amen. We've been misused and abused by somebody. Stop hearing people from our hurt perspective. We ought to hear people from God's perspective. A soul that needs to be saved. And verse 19. Verse 19 is was, this is where I heard was. Verse 19 in the New Living Translation says, For God was in Christ. Reconciling the world to himself. No longer counting people's sins against them. And us. 
that the work that was done to make us right with God was done. For it was God in Christ, or God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. When we believed in Christ Jesus as personal Savior, the work was complete. Amen. For us. Now we are on a mission to get other folk to hear the message and receive it for themselves. Amen. You can't make anybody get saved. I'm, I'm raising my hand. I can't make anybody get saved. I learned that lesson a long time ago in Corpus Christi, Texas. I couldn't make anybody get saved. I got a bunch of teenagers quote unquote say I got them baptized I got them I got them in a in a discipleship class and before two or three weeks were gone they were gone that's because I I I pushed them brother Wayne I coached them I did everything I thought was good enough to get them to the, come to the place to accept Christ for themselves. But what God showed me after I asked him, what happened? You heard me say this before. The Lord told me straight up, you got them saved. <laughs> he said, you got them saved. I didn't get them saved. The work that's necessary to get people saved has already been done. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against him. And he gave us this wonderful message. How many of you know it's the message? How many of you know it's the message? Well, how do I tell the message? Tell the message from your perspective. <laughs> Amen. Sister Darlene, tell them I was once lost. Amen. Tell them. Brother Vernon, I was blind. Tell them I was out there myself. Amen. Often God's going to give you somebody that's right where you used to be. You can tell them, say, I sat where you sit. <laughs> Amen. I used to sit where you're sitting. I used to think like you're thinking. I used to talk like you're talking. I know what it's like to be wasted or drunk or drugged out or whatever it is that they've been through or going through. They need to hear the message. And it's the message, amen, that is the power of God under salvation, believing, hallelujah. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the message. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. And verse 21. Uh, verse 20, let's see. So we are Christ's ambassadors. Just so you know, you've got an assignment and an ordination and approval. You're an ambassador of Christ. God is making his appeal through us, through you, through me. He's making his appeal through us. Amen. If you just let him, God will speak. Amen. If you just pay attention, God's going to set you up to share the message. Amen. You'll, you'll hear somebody talking something you know something about. And all you need to do is tell them what Jesus did for you. And leave it there and let God do the rest. Amen. When we speak for Christ, we can tell people, come back to God. They were created in God's image. There's something in man's DNA that tells them that they're missing out on a creator. You don't have to explain that. They know something. Often they say, something told me. <laughs> Amen. Verse 21, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sins so that we could be made right with God through Christ Jesus. Amen. All right, let's prepare ourselves 
for communion. Everyone that's a believer, everyone that's a child of God, everyone that has been called out of darkness into his marvelous light, everyone that has accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior, and you know him for yourself, and you're not ashamed of telling somebody that you know him for yourself. We're going to do something in a few moments where Jesus said, I don't want you to ever forget what I've done. Amen. He was, he was the lamb slain. He was sacrificed. He became sin in our place. He was crucified. He was wounded. How I many you know Jesus was so that we could be? Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to if you're if you're let's let's do what the scripture advises us to do as well is this is the first communion that we're taking in this new year. Let me remind us that we need to examine ourselves. What does that mean, Pastor Simon? Don't let anything interfere with right relationship with God. Every believer ought to have a time of prayer and refinement when you get things right with you and God. Amen. Let me ask you if you've ever had one of these experiences like I have. I'm, this is your pastor, so I'm I'm being transparent. Have, how many of you ever had, okay, we had 2020, so I know you're going to say, yeah. how many of you ever had a bad day? How many of you ever had a few bad days? <laughs> Let me say it a little bit more pointed. How many of you ever said something you regret saying? <laughs> Amen. Uh, our lives, and I said that so that we can be reminded that we ought to examine ourselves on a regular basis. We're living in a world that's Antichrist, contrary to God's will and purpose. And so it influences, it has impact upon us, but we are light in this dark world, so we're here to make a difference. But the stuff we have to deal with in the world, it impacts us. It buffets us. Amen, amen, amen. Y'all got a song? Amen, amen, amen.
Amen. Does everyone have elements? Praise the Lord. Don't ever forget <laughs> that God wants us to always remember. Amen. There's coming a time, Sister Georgia and Sister Ernestine, that and we don't even know what that's going to be like when we get in glory with Him. Amen. No more forgetting. No more hurting. No more pain. No more suffering. All the stuff that we've experienced in this life will be lifted off of us. But while we're still here, the Lord says, I want you to do something because he implied that it's our nature to forget. He says, I want you to do this. This is an ordinance, a ceremony that the Lord has given to us to remember what he's done. He was crucified. This reminds us that he was crucified for us in our place. He said, this bread, it represents my body which was broken. Amen. He, he, he was wounded for our transgression. The chastisement of our peace was upon him by his wounds were healed. Healing comes from his brokenness. Amen. Let's remember and declare that by his wounds. We are here. Amen. Let's eat the bread in remembrance. Amen, amen, amen. 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 And even greater still, he took the cup. And he said, this, this cup represents my blood. He said, without the shedding of blood, a life for a life. Yeah. An innocent life for a guilty life. He said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, no forgiveness, no payment for sin. He said, when you drink this cup, you remember that your sins are forgiven and washed away. What can wash away my sin? Nothing, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Let's drink it together and with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Amen. Anything? Let y'all just end up with a song here. Oh, yeah. Give me some. Let's close out. The blood that Jesus, Jesus shed for
Amen. God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Have a blessed rest of the day. On the hill. On the hill. No matter what people